PSAT and the, the slightly more difficult SAT have been criticized in the past, and sometimes for good reason, but I think the current test is about as good an assessment as we're going to find, so I want to talk a bit about why I think it's useful. So one criticism about the uh, PSAT is that it pertains to the reading section. People have complained in the past that the reading portion is just a big vocab test, and 15 and 20 years ago, it was. Uh, when I took the PSAT or the, and the SAT, it was just a, a bunch of antonyms and, well, vocabulary. If you knew what the words meant, you got a good score. If you didn't know what they meant, you didn't get a good score. Today, though, those questions don't exist. The assessment determines if a student can read or not, and it's an excellent, like the current test is an excellent assessment of a student's reading ability. Um, the grammar that's included on the the PSAT is all very relevant grammar. It's the kind of grammar that matters to student writing. Um, so the, the test focuses on a student's writing ability. Uh, the math sections assess computational skills. So can a student calculate with a calculator, without a calculator, but can a student solve these problems? And many questions incorporate reading skills as well. So the, the math um, a test assesses if students' reading comprehension enhances their ability to solve math problems. Another criticism that this test gets is less a criticism and more, more just a feeling. Um, for some people, standardized tests are just, they're icky or they're a necessary evil or there's like a vague sense of foreboding about them. Um, while I'll acknowledge that um, not everyone is a fan of standardized testing. I would like to talk about this this feeling that some have about it. Um, for one, it's that hasn't been my experience with the test, and it, and there are plenty of people, teachers in this building even, who would attest that uh, this test has opened doors for them that they wouldn't have had open for them otherwise. Um, some of our colleagues will will tell you that they had access to colleges or scholarship money that they wouldn't have gotten uh, any other way. The, the SAT test itself began as, a, as an equalizer. Um, a Harvard president back in the 1930s wanted to bring in more students who didn't come from the East Coast elite prep schools, and so he used the test as a way to identify talent outside of those prep schools. As, uh, as one college professor wrote, talent scouting was actually one of the original purposes of the SAT. James Conant, a president of Harvard, wanted to recruit uh, students of talent, even from out-of-the-way places. Grade scales may be quirky or inconsistent, but a single test with a single scale offers a reality check. It gives the talented kids from East Nowhere or West Nowhere or Midwest Nowhere a chance to prove uh, what she can do. And the same applies to international students who are often fans of the test because, again, it gives them an equal playing field or a, a benchmark that lets them prove their skills. I'll end this video with a story about an egg, and I think it's relevant. So this author and his wife, they, they would eat at the same restaurant every week. One day, um, one of them wanted to have an egg on a hamburger. It was an off-menu order. I mean, they order the hamburger all the time, but this day, they wanted an egg on the, on the burger. Well, the restaurant refused. Uh, the restaurant said that they had to save all the eggs that they have for other menu items. Um, the couple asked for flexibility over the egg. They, they eat there. The couple said, you know, they eat there every week. They just, they just felt whimsical. I don't know. They just wanted an egg. Could they have an egg? The staff refused to accommodate, and uh, a bad situation turned worse. And so the couple decided they're not going to that restaurant anymore. Well, the couple later calculated that they spent $6,000 a year at this restaurant. So because of one egg, the restaurant lost that much money every year. So I think we can learn a lesson from this, you know, this couple's experience. Um, if we as, as a school display a positive attitude about the PSAT, um, that positive attitude will trickle down to students. Uh, students are more likely to care about the test, they're more likely to take it seriously, they're more likely to study for it, and we don't know which of our comments or which of our um, suggestions to students could turn into a $6,000 scholarship or a $60,000 scholarship. Um, if, if a student 
studies just a little bit extra and gets those extra 20 or 30 points, that could be the difference between a massive scholarship or no scholarship at all. Or it could be the difference between a student getting a PSAT or an SAT score that gets them into the college versus doesn't get them into the college. So I think the attitude we have as a school matters for this test, and I think it's worth a whole lot more than $6,000 um, for some simple egg. So hopefully we, we display that kind of positive attitude.